Welcome back to the uh, AutoCAD 2008 tutorial series. Um, in this tutorial we're going to be going over erasing objects using a regular window and a crossing window. We're also going to get into um, polar object snaps or polar tracking. Um, let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is make sure that you've got the same screen as I do. Uh, make sure you go to your workspaces and set it to AutoCAD Classic. And to do that, if you go to your tools, pull down menu, go over to workspaces, go down to workspaces, should be right on the top, slide over to AutoCAD Classic and select that, you should have the same window configuration as I do for your AutoCAD. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's talk about some crossing windows and some regular windows when we're selecting objects. Now this goes for any time we select objects, not when we're erasing, but I'm going to show it to you using the erase command. Um, in the last tutorial when we talked about erasing, uh, we selected our objects just by picking on them. So I'm going to start my erase command, pick my erase button there, and I'm going to pick a couple of objects. And when I'm finished, I'm going to hit my enter button on my keyboard, or I'm going to hit my space bar, or my middle mouse button, remember? And when I do that, it's going to erase my objects, right? Well, one other way that we can select objects, and again, this doesn't have to just correspond with erasing objects. It can, anytime AutoCAD is asking to select objects, this is a way that you can use to select objects. I'm going to draw a window around these objects this time. So, I'm going to start my erase command. Now, instead of picking an object, I'm going to miss the object purposely. Notice I'm over here on the top left-hand corner of this number one circle. I'm going to pick as if I'm picking an object and it's going to start with this window command and it's actually asking me to to select the opposite corner you'll notice on your command line the opposite corner well as I pull down to the right I'm going to get a window and anything within the window within that rectangle when I pick the opposite corner is going to be selected and if I pull to the left that's a crossing window and we're going to talk about that in a minute crossing window will pull down to the left or up to the left and a regular window will go up to the right or down to the right. And I'll show you how you can go back and forth between the two. So anyway, I'm going to pull down to the right. Anything within that window is going to be selected. So notice the objects within the window is the number one circle and the number five circle. I'm going to pick the opposite corner. It selects the two objects and then it erases them. Okay. Now let's use a crossing window. I'm going to start my erase command. This time I'm going to pull start from up here above to the right to the top right of the three and then I'm going to pull down to the left. Notice I get a crossing window and I know that because it's kind of a dotted line around the rectangle and it's also a green box on my screen. So I'm going to pull down to the left. Notice the three circle is completely encompassed within the rectangle uh, but the five is not. It's just touching. Well with the crossing window anything within the window is going to be selected but anything that those crossing line, or that rectangle touches Anything that the rectangle touches is going to be selected as well. So although the number 5 circle is not completely encompassed within the window, because that rectangular box is touching it, or crossing it, and hence the term crossing window, it's going to be selected as well. See how that works? Now how do you switch between the two? Maybe I don't want to pull down to the right when I won't do a window. I want to do a crossing down to the right. Well, I'm going to start my erase command, and down here on my command line, when AutoCAD asks me to select objects, Instead of just picking my objects, I'm going to tell it right now that I want a regular window. And to do that, I'm going to type in a W and hit Enter. And now, no matter which way I pull, I'm going to get a regular window. Again, anything within the window is going to be selected. Okay. Now, this time I'm going to do a crossing window. I'm going to hit C and Enter. Excuse me, let me step back and slow down a little bit. I'm going to start my erase command. We're going to ask me to select objects. I'm going to hit C. I'm going to hit Enter. It's asking me for my first corner. I'm going to pick up to the upper left of the one, pull down to the right, and I've got my crossing window. No matter which way I go, I've got a crossing because I've told AutoCAD by typing in that C. Okay? Select my objects, and there they go. And that's crossing window and regular window. Remember, you can use that when you're selecting any objects for any reason. When AutoCAD asks you to select objects, you can use that crossing window or that regular window to do the op to select the objects. All right, moving right along. Let's talk about polar tracking. Well, when we start our line command, or when we started our line command in the other tutorials, AutoCAD asks us for a base point. So I pick a point here, and I get this rubber banding action. 
Well, if I want to draw a line um, 10 units long, I can pull to the right, type in the number 10, and AutoCAD is going to draw it in that direction. The problem is, is it's not orthogonally correct, right? I'm at some crazy angle there. So what I want to do, or what I can do, is I can turn on my polar tracking. Down here on my status bar, you'll see a polar button. If you click on that, it's going to turn polar tracking on, and you'll see it come on there on the command line. Now, when I start my line, pick my first point. Notice when I hit these 90 degree increments, I get it kind of locks in. Okay? Well, that way I know, let's say I pull to the right, I'm locked in to 0 degrees. So I come over here, pull to the right. And when I'm locked in, I can type in a value, let's say 20. Hit enter. And I've just drawn a line 20 units long directly in the zero or right at zero degrees. Okay? If I want to draw another line straight up or at 90 degrees, lock in at 90, type in the distance that I want, let's say 15 this time, and hit enter. And there's my line directly up or at 90 degrees. Now, what if I have an odd angle? What if I want to set it to 45 degree angles or 30 degree angles? Well, I can do that. If you go down to your polar button down here on your status bar, if you hit your middle finger mouse button, in my case I'm right-handed, so I've got a right-handed mouse, it's my right mouse button. If I hit my middle finger mouse button, I get a little window that pops up, and I'm going to go down to settings. You might not be able to see that, I think it's actually off the screen now for this recording. But I'm going to go down to settings, and it's going to pull up a polar tracking dialog box. Notice my polar tracking is on. This is a little indicator right here. My increment angle is 90. Well, I can set my increment angle to any of these angles here. These are just some standard angles, and I'm going to select 45, and I'm going to hit OK down on the bottom of my dialog box. Now, whenever I draw a line, I have it's going to snap at every 45 degree angle. Okay, so a real nice, easy way to draw um, at specific angles without having to type the angle in every time. This time I'm going to pull up to the right, and as soon as it locks in there, I'm going to give it a distance, let's say 10, hit enter, and I've just drawn a line 10 units long. Remember to get out of a command, I'm going to harp on this all the time. If you're ever in a command, let's say the line command, and I draw and I pull up to the right here for a 45 degree angle line, I type in 15, I hit enter, and I'm finished with that command. Well. In the line, the case of the line command, if I want to end the command and get back to a blank command prompt, I'm going to hit my enter key. Okay, that's going to get me there. But remember, if you're ever lost, you're not sure where AutoCAD is or what it wants you to do, and you want to get back to a blank command prompt, which is extremely important when you're learning, hit escape a few times. Okay, then in my line command, I draw a line. Not sure where I am, I want to get out of it, back to a blank command prompt. Hit escape a couple times. Remember, hit it a couple times, get used to doing that. Now, if I go to my polar, dial my polar tracking dialog box, one more thing I want to show you is I can add additional angles here. I'm going to select additional angles, click on new, and I can type in an angle. Let's say I want an angle of 15 degrees. Okay? So I know that I have additional angles selected. Hit OK. Now if I draw my line, pick my first point, Notice I get polar tracking at every 15 degree angle. Isn't that cool? Okay, so if I want one there at 15 degrees, pull up to the right, let it lock in, type in my distance, and hit enter. There's a line at 15 degrees at exactly the distance that I typed in. Well, that's polar tracking. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to get into drawing some rectangles and circles and also uh, get into viewing your drawing in the next tutorial as well. So until then, um, I appreciate you watching, and I look forward to uh, talking to you soon. Bye-bye.